Good morning everybody on YouTube, it's me, the Student Witch, and I figured I'd just give a little uh, altar tour of um, my reverence altar upstairs. I have several um, fairly small altars throughout my apartment, um, but this is the largest in my, in my apartment, and I keep it upstairs near my, my bed because this is where I I honor and um, give time and space to uh, ancestors, spirits, um, forces of the universe, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> um, so for those of you who have seen my previous ancestor altars, uh, you'll notice that the, the bottom part down here um, looks very similar. Uh, to how it did before for Samhain and for the Autumn Equinox. Uh, mainly, it's this central part that I have kind of lifted up on this wooden box. This is the part of the altar where I honor the current season uh, or the current holiday or celebration. So this is for dun -dun -dun -dun, the winter solstice. Uh, aka Yule, aka my birthday. <laughs> um, my birthday is December 21st, so it's uh, usually the day of or the day before the winter solstice, officially according to the calendar, but I think the whole week of uh, Christmas into New Year's, that whole time span, basically from December 20th to the 31st, I think that whole time frame needs to be celebrated um so yeah so let me start down here and i'll just do a quick run through of um what i got going on for those of you who may not may not have seen my previous altar tour videos um i have removed a few things that are very personal uh, and these back here are actually love letters from my husband because <laughs> he's awesome um and um we're currently in a long distance relationship because he's finishing his uh phd down in georgia and i'm up here in massachusetts so um that's the backstory on that <laughs> um here i i think of this half of the altar as the more kind of masculine side, even though I kind of balance it out with these tools of divination, which I relate divination to um, the more divine, feminine, emotional, intuitive part. Um, so I, I have certain aspects of the altar that kind of uh, creep into the other side. So I have this more feminine aspect on my masculine side, but I also have this owl feather to represent air. I have, um, this is where I keep my cone incense, which also represents, you know, air and my sacred masculine symbol. I don't have many, um, human forms or representations on my altar, at least on this altar up here. Uh, because I like to just keep things abstract um, for this altar because I'm not only uh, worshipping, even though I don't like that word, I'm not only honoring um, my human ancestors, I'm also honoring uh, some other ideas that are kind of abstract anyway. <laughs> like, um, thinking of uh, ancient life forms as your ancestors, because they are. Um, it's not as relatable, it's not as easily relatable as human ancestors might be. But, um, for example, these fossils over here that I keep, these are our ancient ancestors. Like, these suckers are older than the dinosaurs, and they came from the ocean. Um, but. I'll get into that in a second. So, sacred masculine, very abstract. Uh, it's a candlestick. I usually have a white candle 
in it, but I'm about to leave and fly back to Georgia in a few days, so I don't want to start up a brand new candle. Plus, it's kind of putting this altar to bed um, for a while because I, I leave December 16th and I won't be back up here in Massachusetts until the last week of January, so I'm kind of uh, tuning things down as I pack and get ready to leave for a while. Um, and here in the central part, I have my, oop, my crystal grid. And Tiamat, she is a goddess that I need to research into. And she is, she came into my life in a very interesting way. And you can find out how by watching, um, my, my reflections on Samhain video. <laughs> but... She's good to mention now because we're we're transitioning over into the more um, sacred feminine aspect or sacred feminine half of my altar. And lately, I think ever since Tiamat um, kind of crossed my path a few months ago, I've been really fascinated by um, like ancient creation goddesses and how a lot of them are related to water or the oceans and how the ancient universe um, was just a chaotic ocean and this chaotic uh, violent but also motherly cave, uh, creation goddess emerges from the ocean or she is the ocean, and Tiamat is one of those uh, ancient goddesses. So, um, with that being said, it's really great how my symbol for the Divine Feminine um, is a water container. Uh, this was given to me as a birthday present a few years ago when my husband and I went to Santiago, Chile, um, where he's from. So that I can meet the family before we got married. <laughs> um, and his best friend down there, she um, has some indigenous ancestry. <clears throat> Excuse me. I can never remember the tribe. <laughs> but I do know that this is, it's a, a replica or a kind of a souvenir. But this is based on the traditional water containers that that group of people um, used to make. And this is, I mean, it's very feminine, it's very curvy, it's very motherly, it reminds me of a uterus, a womb. Um, I've always loved the word womb. It just sounds so comforting. Anyway, <laughs> the womb. Um, and this is what it looks like on the other side. But I think I'm gonna keep it like that. So inside of her, as this watery, chaotic, motherly creation goddess, <laughs> um, I have these, I don't really know what they are. Um, I found them when I was a kid, and so if anyone can enlighten me, <laughs> I, they're obviously, or I think they're man-made. Maybe not, they could be natural phenomenon. But um, they're perfectly round rounded little stones, but I keep them inside of her for, you know, that whole great pregnancy, fertility vibe as well. Um, and here, going back to the ancient ancestors, these um, are called pentramites, and they were little, very simple creatures who lived in the oceans um, about... I can't remember. They're older than the dinosaurs, so <laughs> we're talking hundreds of millions of years ago. And this is just a dried piece of coral. So that nice watery, feminine, um, but also earthy, pregnant aspect going on here. So the masculine that has snuck over onto this side, I represented in money. Um, I think of money as a very masculine kind of tool. Um, 
and I found this the other day some leftover money from when we went to Chile. So this is Chilean currency. Um, son mil pesos. So it's a thousand Chilean pesos. Banco Central de Chile. And then this is the other side. What is the image on here? Let me see. It says it right there. I don't know if it's gonna... Peso mil peso. Oh, it just repeats mil peso. Where is that? Well, anyway, do you see that? It has a llama! <laughs> because the Andes mountain chain basically goes down the whole length of Chile. Um, Chile is a very interesting place. I highly recommend it if anyone's looking to go somewhere in South America. Um, just spend a day or two in Santiago and then explore the rest of the country. You have some of the driest deserts in the world in the north and then you have um you know the antarctic in the south and then they also own easter island so very interesting country anyway so this is the masculine ele element um i also have this up here because my human ancestors that i honor in this space it's not just my blood, I'm, I'm including the blood of my husband's family in there too, so... And they're all Chilean, so <laughs> there you go. And they're all still in Chile. Um, this is my bottle of Florida water. Um, for tradition and reverence, honoring tradition of my Appalachian and uh, southern, southern roots. Um, and some Palo Santo, which I also, I associate Palo Santo with uh, the Divine Feminine. It has a feminine energy to me, whereas um, Cone Incense has a more masculine air energy to me. And this is my favorite Cone Incense. It's the Triloka Ayurvedic series. Um, how much did I pay for this? Does it have a price tag on it? Oh, I must have taken the price tags off, but um, they have water, which has a, a nice uh, earthly, earthy uh, vibe to it as well. Um, air, and this has this is slightly more sweet than the water, but still very earthy. And then the fire, and this is the sweetest one of of the three. So. That's what I burn every morning and evening here. And now uh, we're up here. I just have something very simple. I, since I'm not gonna actually be physically here in this apartment for the holidays, um, I just went to Michael's and basically everything here I got at Michael's except for the incense burner. Uh, these are pine cones. Um, basically the idea of this area is to honor the current holiday. And the current holiday is the winter solstice or Yule. And that represents hope. Um, you know, the leading up to the winter solstice, it's getting darker and darker and darker. And holy crap, I don't know if any of you have lived in the Northeast, but this is my first time living this far north. And the sun sets at 4.12 in the afternoon. Holy shit. <laughs> so, anyway, so the sun goes down earlier and earlier. It's darker and darker and darker. Um, more of those subconscious, emotional, um, intuitive aspects come out. Those uh, shadowy parts of ourselves come out. Which is uh, why I guess winter is so great for shadow work. But then, on the solstice, every day after the solstice, the days keep getting longer and longer and warmer and warmer. So it, that's where the life, the hope, the light comes in, you know. So, <clears throat> pine cones, these are seeds, you know, the seeds of new life. And these are actually all scented with cinnamon. And there's some small pieces of cinnamon here too. Um, which is, smells divine. Uh, there's a few gold painted ones too, so gold with the light. There are these little sparkly red decorative balls mixed in. 
Hehe, <laughs> balls. Okay. <laughs> I swear I'm older than 12. Okay. Um, and then the traditional uh, Christmassy secular colors. Uh, or, well, Christmassy religious and secular colors. So I like those colors. This is actually going to be my first um, Christmas as a pagan witch. So, um, well, actually, last Christmas was my first, but I'm definitely more deep into it now. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I'll make a video about that later. So, yeah, this is my altar. Um, thanks for going on this little tour with me. Bye.